The reasons for selling art on Walmart are numerous. However, deciding to sell on Walmart is only one piece of the puzzle. Not only do you need to make sure that you have a solid keyword strategy, but you need to make sure that you are doing everything you possibly can to capture the clicks and convert customers once they get onto your product page. So in today's video, we are going to be diving in how you can dominate your product page optimization for Walmart to make sure that you are maximizing your presence on this marketplace and that you are sending your brand off into the success horizon. So if that sounds good to you, then let's go ahead and dive into things. Hello, my name is Emma Shermer Tamir. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Marketing by Emma. And what we do is we help businesses be that on Amazon, on Walmart, on their own websites, posted on places like Shopify to figure out what makes them special and unique and then be able to communicate that to their target customers so that they can maximize their sales potential. And every platform has things that are the same that will always be good ideas to do, but also also specific nuances and you need to really understand what those nuances are if you want to make the most of the specific place that you are selling in. And so in today's video, we're going to be going into some of the main things that you must do in order to create a conversion spiking product page for Walmart. Now, I already mentioned at the intro of this video some of the main reasons that you might want to consider selling on Walmart. It is a marketplace that has a lot to offer in certain categories. It can be particularly advantageous. Everything from, from protecting how your brand shows up in an omni-channel approach to reaching new customers. And something else that a lot of e-commerce businesses are really struggling with is not only driving traffic, but really being able to capture that traffic profitably. We know that fees are on the rise in a lot of different marketplaces. And so really being able to think about building a diversified strategy is super important. By the way, if you are wanting to diversify onto Walmart, they have a fantastic offer for new sellers that's going to save you up to 50% off on referral, fulfillment, storage, prep, and service fees. Now note that there are some special conditions that may apply. If you would like to sign up, you can go to my link, go to.walmart.com slash Emma. If you're not already signed up to sell on Walmart, then I would recommend that you take advantage of this offer. It is a great way to save some extra money and maintain even more profitability while simultaneously reaching a whole new customer base. So there are two there are two objectives when it comes to optimizing a product page on any anywhere in the world. The first objective is to be found. And then the second objective is to be converting customers. So once they find you, they want to buy from you. So I think it would be helpful in this sense to do what we like to do on Marketing by Emma and put on our imaginary hats and pretend that we are selling an item so we have a little bit more context to things. So let's say that you want to sell a paintbrush. Now, this is where we are already needing to get a little bit clear about things. And the first step is to really make sure that you are doing your keyword research because the keywords are going to be the way that customers are searching for your product and then your product is being associated with those searches. And so when somebody goes to Walmart and they search for the thing they need, your product is the thing that pops up. So we need to know what customers are searching and what keywords we need to be focusing on when we are putting the listing together. So what tool I would recommend for that is Helium 10. They have two keyword research tools that you can use for this, both Cerebro as well as Magnet. The Cerebro is going to look at your competitors' listings and see what keywords they are already associated with and indexing for. And then Magnet is a great way to get even more specific if perhaps you have something unique or you know that there are other ways that customers could be searching, then you can also use that as well to make sure that you build out a really solid list and foundation of keywords that you are going to be using. But if you are selling a paintbrush and you go to and search paintbrush 
on walmart.com, you're going to see right off the bat that there are two categories that show up. We have home improvement and we have arts, crafts, and, and sewing. So craft supplies, essentially. So those are going to be two very different types of products used for two diff very different types of functions. And customers are, are not necessarily going to want one when they're searching for the other. So this is where keyword research is really important because if you're just relying on keywords like paintbrush, then you're going to drastically limit your potential to connect with the right kinds of customers. So perhaps thinking about uh, craft paint brushes, art brushes, but of course you shouldn't just be guessing about this. You should be going to Helium 10. You should be using Cerebro and Magnet and getting a solid list of keywords that you know have data behind them to show that customers are act actually searching for those words. So in the case of this video, we are going to be focusing on arts, crafts, and sewing category. So the kinds of paintbrushes that you would want if you were wanting to paint a picture for um, for a loved one, if, if that's what you're into. So we are going to click into the arts, crafts, and sewing category. We're gonna view all. And now we have refined our search a little bit more to products that are all within our search criteria. So there are two main tools that we have once we have that keyword base done. We have the main image and we have the title. And both of those things are very important to communicating what your product is and whether it is a good fit for your customer. And so we want to be thinking about what we can do in order to be able to position our product as the one for them to choose. So if I'm just looking at the variety of paintbrushes that are for arts, I see that there's a whole bevy of options available to me. So I have foam sponges, I have really precise detail brushes, I have full sets. So I have a lot of different things. I have paintbrushes that look like they're uh, more geared towards children using them. A lot of different types of products that, again, may not all be super relevant to the customer that I'm actually trying to sell to. So that's where it's really important to do two things. There's the competitor research and there is the customer research. And you want to be doing both of these things in tandem so that you understand who you're competing against and who you are trying to sell to. And so when we're talking about competitor research, this doesn't have to be limited just to Walmart. However, it's really important that you're also doing this on Walmart because you want to see who is ranking in the top spots who is selling the best right now and what do you need to do in order to capture some of their market share and become the one to beat on Walmart. And so thinking about how, what makes them unique and how that might be different from what makes you unique. It could be, let's just use the paintbrushes as, as an analogy. Maybe most people are selling uh, paintbrushes that are just for beginner painters. They're not that high quality. They fray really easily. They don't give you that control that you're looking for if you are really trying to create, bring an artistic vision to life, especially if you have some skills under your belt. So you are selling paintbrush set that is for more experienced, more advanced artists that are really really looking to take their creations to the next level. And so being clear about, you see how I, I say that they're separate, but they're also very much the same. So you want to know who your competitors are, but then you also want to understand who your customers are. And in that space, you're going to figure out where you can really carve out a, a separate niche that you're able to position yourself in in a way that's going to bring those customers in and then make them excited to buy from you. Let's just review, this is kind of your prep work. So you've done your keyword research, you've done your competitor research, and you've done your customer research. You're clear on all of these things. Now it's time to start creating. So you need to be figuring out what you can do both on a visual as well as textual way to help customers understand why your product and your brand is the one that they should choose. So there are a few pieces that you have in order to be able to do this. We briefly touched on the main image 
and the title. And then you also have key features, description, and rich media. So I will now go into each of those pieces a little bit more and talk about what their what their job is and how you can really make the most of each of these sections. So the main image, it needs to follow very specific rules. It's worthwhile looking at your category guide on the Walmart Seller Central if you are uncertain about what those are. But this is really to just show a clear picture of what your product is so that customers understand that what you're selling is what they're looking for. And so you want to both make sure that you have a great clear image, but also if there's anything that you can do to set your product apart from the competitors to attract their eyeballs to your product page versus the other alternatives out there is very important. So there's even just the way that you display your products, whether it's just kind of all thrown there uh, in a heap or if it's clearly uh, organized and, and looking pretty, that makes a difference. And I'm not just talking by pure happenstance. We have Hello Hobby assorted paintbrushes where that image, while it is colorful and cute, it's also jumbled together in a way that's not at the most clear. So I think that they could find a way of still showing that they have an amazing assortment of 25 colorful paintbrushes, but in a way that's a little bit clearer for customers to be able to understand exactly what they are getting. So after your main image, you have your title. Walmart recommends short titles. However, I do see that a lot of sellers are using longer titles just like anywhere else. Some of this is probably going to be category specific to uh, what's the norms for the products that you're selling, but also don't be afraid to do some testing and see what is going to perform better. The main thing is that you're really clearly communicating what your product is. You're giving customers that reinforcement that, that whatever it was that they were searching for when they went to Walmart in the first place, that your product is that and that you are welcoming them into your virtual store, if you will. So this is the sign on your door that's saying, yes, you're in the right place. Come on in. So that's that's what the title's job is. Of course, there's also an SEO component to that as well. So if you're able to use some of those important keywords that you identified in your keyword research, it's a really good idea to include those in there. So now we have done the job of figuring out what sets you apart, who your customers are, and how to get customers in the door. Now it's time to convert them. And in order to do that, we have a few pieces. We have your key features, which are your bullet points. These are short bullet points. You get between three and 10 to use. Uh, they should be at maximum 80 characters. So these are really compact, really to the point, very skimmable and calling out the most important information that a customer would want to know about your item. So key features, let's just look at an example to show you what I mean. I've clicked into the crazy art, all purpose artist brushes as an example of who I am imaginarily competing against. And their key features, you see that they're very short, these are a little bit messy and they're not organized in the most user-friendly way. It looks like they're also doing some keyword stuffing. So you really want to be clear about this is a, a list of important callouts. And if you make them too hard to follow or too cluttered or focus only on keyword optimization without really thinking about the information that customers want to know quickly and easily, then you could just be confusing people rather than helping them get a quick easy understanding of what your product is. So to change this, I would actually make the seven count right at the front of the first bullet rather than putting it at the end in the way that they have. I would make this breakdown a little bit clearer. I wouldn't be so repetitive in all of this information. And I would, if they don't need to use all of these key features, then you don't necessarily need to use them e either. More is not always better, especially if more is just going to create confusion and potentially send customers to want to buy from your competitors. So really thinking about how can you maximize that three to 10 bullet space to call out the most important features and, and elements of your product in a way that's going to make your Walmart listing skimmable and easy for customers to verify essentially that this product meets what they what they want. 
And then you have the description, which should be at least a minimum of 150 characters, but you can certainly make it longer than that, which can go a little bit more in depth into explaining what your product is great for, what makes it special, who your brand is, why people love it so much. So really being able to get into a little bit more depth to build that relationship, to give people a broader sense beyond just the nut and bolts details like what the key features section is. But then where you can really shine is the rich media. Now, one thing that we didn't talk about is we talked about the main image, but then you have other product images as well. Now, those images images wouldn't be considered part of rich media unless they are a 360 image, but they're also very valuable real estate for you to be thinking about how can you really communicate to your customers the information that they need to know about your product, what makes it so great, why it's better than the alternative. So thinking about how you can use lifestyle imagery, how you can integrate text in those photos to really tell a story, set yourself apart and win over those customers. Now, for the other parts of rich media, you have a video, which of course we know video is a very powerful tool for being able to not only show your product in action, but we know that people love consuming videos. It's a quick and easy way to really get a sense of what a product and brand is. So if you have the abilities, definitely invest in in creating a nice video that you can upload to your Walmart page. And then lastly, we have the rich media below the fold about the brand section. And this is essentially your space to go a little bit wilder with really being able to show your product and brand off in a very visual way, almost like a mini landing page, or if you're familiar with Amazon, like the A plus content on a page. So this is is where you have the ability to integrate text and imagery together to tell a very powerful story for why your product is the best choice. So one thing to that you do want to keep in mind when it comes to rich media is that you will need to either host it yourself or pay a company to host it. So it is There are a couple of more steps to doing this. However, it is a way to really be able to set yourself apart. There are still not that many brands that are taking advantage of this. So it's just one asset that you have as a brand owner to be able to really show off your product to its full potential, your brand and why it's so great and why people should feel excited and trust your you and what you're selling. And so why not take advantage of that? So Hello Hobby has a an example that I know I was calling them out for their less than ideal main image. And unfortunately, I have to say that while they are using rich media, I would not necessarily say that this is the best example of rich media. They are colorful, but maybe a little too colorful. The text that they have on the edited into this rich media imagery is very difficult to read. It's very busy. There's a lot of color going on to the point where it's difficult to follow. I love the idea of the types of brushes and showing what kinds of strokes you can get with those brushes. So I think it's a great concept. However, I think that the way that they've done it, I would actually think that it would be much clearer to make all of the brushes vertical and be able to just look at them in a straight line rather than having them all smooshed together in the middle. And then we have this little uh, bit about Horizon Group USA connects people through creativity, which feels a little strange because this is also, they are saying that the name of this brand is Hello Hobby. However, this is talking about a totally different brand. So I don't know if this is just maybe they rebranded or this is a mistake or something else. So it's a good idea. However, there's some pretty big issues with the execution there. And also, Again, it's hard to read. It's uh, white writing on a light blue. There's not great contrast there. And it's a, it's a lot of text. So how could they maybe break that up and make it more bite-sized? So this is an example of what rich media can look like, but I wouldn't necessarily say that this is an example of what your rich media should look like if you want to do this really effectively. So in just kind of summary, let's go through one more time. We have the keyword research, competitor research, and your customer research. 
this is something that you also want to be doing constantly. This isn't something that you do once when you're first putting your Walmart page together and then never looking back at again as your category evolves, as your customers change, as new competitors enter the arena. This is going to be the way that you continue to maintain that edge so that you have what it takes to stand out and dominate everybody else that is trying to sell what you're selling. And the thing is, is that if you do a good job, you're going to have competitors that are copying what you do. And so you're going to be constantly needing to think about what next trick do you have up your sleeve to stay ahead and to win against the competition. Then we have all of the creative assets. We have your imagery, your title, your key features, your description, and the various parts of rich media, which you can use to really communicate why you're so great, why customers are going to be happy they chose you. And when you're able to do all of this really effectively, then Walmart is suddenly one more place where you are not only generating sales, but really creating fans that are going to tell other people about your product, that are going to be excited to buy from you. And so if you really want to know what it takes to build a brand that is going to create those raving fans, then I suggest that you watch the video that is going to be playing right about now. And if you haven't signed up for Walmart, go ahead and do it. Go to .walmart.com slash Emma to claim that new seller offer. And thank you so much for watching. If you like this, be sure to give it a like, subscribe, drop your questions and comments below and figure out what it takes to build an unbeatable brand by watching the video that's coming up now. Bye.